Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about how to configure the dynamic translation with Microsoft Azure. Before uh, configuring that, you need to have dynamic translation plugin installed in your instances. Go to plugins and search for dynamic translation. So click on the dynamic translation and click on install. So whenever you are installing a dynamic translation plugin, it will be included with seven plugins like IBM Watson, uh, Service Spoke, um, language detection spoke, Microsoft Azure spoke, and dynamic translation for particular agent chart or service spoke, or other service spokes. So these all will be installed with the dynamic translation plugin. After installing it, let's move on to the Azure account. If you are using it for the first time, you need to create your own account in the Microsoft Azure and log into the portal.azure.com. If you are having free trials with your company accounts, you can do that. If you don't have, you need to uh, apply the credit card and you, need, uh, you, you can go for free trial for one month. So after doing that, you can check for the translators in search bar or directly you can see it here. So click on these translators. So I'm already created one translator. Let's create other one. I'm creating a new one. Let's load this page. Here you can sell it subscription. Mine is a free, free trial. I'm sell, going with the free trial. If you are having any subscriptions, you can select that. So uh, I have already created a resource group. It is populating the same resource group here. If you want to create a new one, you can click on this and you can create it. After that, it will populate directly here. Let me create one for us and click on OK. Here you can see new dynamic is a new resource group and you need to select the region where you are living. I'm going with the Southeast Asia and you need to provide a, a name for the translator. Pricing type. You can select pricing tire as pay as you go. Mine is a free trial so I'm select going with the pay as you go. This is how you can do it you can click on review plus create and it will create a new translator for us and you can click on create i already have one i'm not going with this so you can click on create so it will create a translator for you so let's go to the dynamic azure click on this uh, translator which you have created now so here you can see few details about the translator, like what is the resource group name and what is the status and location, subscription, what subscription you selected, subscription ID, and we will be having endpoints and manage keys. We require the endpoints. We need to use it in the ServiceNow instance to integrate both the platforms. See here you can auto detect. If you want to select any language, you can do it and it will convert into this particular language. If you give any text here, like if you give English text, it will convert into the Spanish language here. This is a try. You can try it, how it works. So let's open the endpoints. Here you will be having two key values. Any one of the key can be used to uh, connect with the service now. And you have text translations and document translations. These you need to be used in the service now instance in the connections. Let's move on to the instance and let's go with connections and credentials. You need to connect with the Microsoft Azure. So let's select here Microsoft translation. We have two translations. One is IBM and Microsoft. We are going with Microsoft translation. Click on this Microsoft translation. See here, you can see we have all these uh, already populated because it is an out of the box uh, connection, uh, connection and credentials. Now, um, for the first time when you are opening it, it doesn't have any connections. You need to create your own connections with the Microsoft Azure. Uh, I already connected one. So let me open this. Here you can see, you need to select the credentials first. So click on these credentials. And you can go with the existing one or you can create a new one. So we don't have the credentials related to the Microsoft Azure when we are working for the first time. So we, we can click on new and you can select API key credentials. So here you can give the name of the 
credential and you can give API key from the Azure portal. Here we already discussed we are having two keys. You can copy any one of the keys and you can give it here. And <clears throat> this is how it works. Let me show that whatever I created earlier and this is the credentials I have created. I copied the key from the Microsoft Azure and it can be attached to the credentials and col um, connection aliases. You need to select one connection aliases from the uh, given uh, connection and credential aliases. I'm going with the translation spoke. And if you're going with the IBM, you need to select with IBM translation. I'm selecting Microsoft translation here. After that, you need to give the connection URL. This can be copied from the Azure portal. This is a text translation. If you're documenting anything, you can give the document translation. I'm going with the text translation. You need to copy this and you need to paste it in the connection URL. And you need to give the subscription region, which we are having having it on the azure this is the location and region you need to copy this and you need to provide it in the subscription region and click on submit so that it will create a connection for us this is how you need to create the connection and this connection will be attached to this particular microsoft credentials after creating these connections you need to go to the dynamic translation and you need to activate the dynamic translation configurations go to the translator configurations and here you can see ibm microsoft and service now we are working with microsoft you can open this microsoft configuration and you need to activate this by default it will be inactive and you need to activate it and you need to make this as a default detection and this will be captured in the dynamic translation application you need to make it as a default here also you can make it as a default translation and default detection and you need to do it as a active and language coding maps you can have it by default out of the box let's move on to the form so that how we can use this dynamic translation we can see that i'm opening the incident form here you can see this is a new different language so let's open this see whenever you're configuring it for a first time you need to uh you need to create an attribute so uh Let's open the, yeah, let's click on any one of the field. I'm clicking on short description. So go to configure dictionary and you need to select an attribute for dynamic translation. Go to the attributes list. Here you can see it. dynamic translation enabled and it's true. By default, it will not be on the form fields. You need to go to the particular form field, click on dictionary and click on new and in attribute section you can select dynamic translation enable and you can give value as true and submit it so that it can see on the attribute list after doing that reload the reload or open the form once again so you can see translate option here if you are doing it for the first time uh, if you do not do it or if you opening for the first time, you cannot see this translate option. After uh, describing it in the attribute, you can see this translate option. So let's click on this translate option. This is some other language which we are going to use here. So let's click on translate. Now it should translate to the English language because system admin are using an English language. You can see it here unable to access the shared folder uh, uh, this meaning is unable to access the shared shared folder this is how you can translate the short descriptions or anything else which you are not able to understand and uh, not only there you can also see in work note section also this translate option 
so you can translate here this is how you will use it this is already in english so it's it's saying this content is written in your preferred language no need to translate this is how it works if you have uh, for the first time you don't have any languages installed in your instances you need to install a plugin called internationalization let's open this plugins list if you want to have different languages in your instance you need to go with internationalization plugin this internationalization plugin has many different uh, languages here you can see 23 languages will be installed if you install this internationalization plugin when you are installing this plugin this will take a lot of time to install like 8 hours 10 hours it may take to install so uh, click on install and leave it after installing this plugin you can have many languages in your instance here you can see languages you have this many languages installed and english will be uh, like installed by default so all agents have or all profiles in um uh service now has english after installing this plugin you can select whatever language you prefer for particular user thank you everyone <laughs>